you about the mix-up. Uh, for those of you who are looking for the REST API session with upstairs, there were two API sessions. They combined them together and gave them the big room, which I am okay with. So, um, but thank you guys all for coming. This is the last session of the day. I know that this is the hard one. We will persevere, and I will get you out in time to go party. Fair enough? Woo all right. So just to give you a very brief introduction of who I am, like you said, my name is Mitch Cantor. I'm from Nashville. Uh, I've been there for almost as long as I've been working on WordPress, which is about 10 or 11 years at this point. Um, back when the, there were no themes, there were no plugins, it was just, it's way more fun now than it used to be, let's, let's put it that way. So um, some of my clients have known, just to give you sort of an idea of what I've worked with, I've worked with Bridgestone. Uh, I just finished a site a couple of weeks ago with Red Bull. Um, I'm actually working on a site, um, kind of a large membership network site. So I, I kind of span the gambit between working with really small clients, bloggers, and small businesses to agencies, Fortune 500 companies, and that sort of thing. Um, but we're not here to talk about me because I'm not important. What's important is WooCommerce. Um, I do not have any slides. Slides are for playgrounds. Um, we're going to get stuff done. So um, basically, I'm going to install WooCommerce. And we're going to walk through the initial setup and talk about how to use WooCommerce. Because I think it's going to be more beneficial for you to see it done and see people like see it in use. Um, I'm going to bring in some dummy data, some just random product data, so you can actually see a WooCommerce store being kind of created before your eyes. So in this half hour, 35 minutes, we're going to do that. And then I'll spend. Uh, a little bit of time afterwards that people want to ask questions, we can do that. Um, and then we all get to go park. Sound good? Woo! Excellent. So, um, the nice thing is that if the internet were to crash, I have everything done locally, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and I actually went ahead and downloaded the plugin too, um, because that, that happens every now and then. So, um, for the curious and the developer minded of you, this is a Vagrant install that I have running. Uh, and it's ready to go with a WordPress child theme. Um, and I did that specifically because later I'm going to be editing this theme in order to work with WooCommerce. But I have a child theme ready to go, um, and I have the plugin ready to go. So I'm actually going to log in. Um, first of all, let's, let's, while I'm logging in, does anybody not know what WooCommerce is? Like, you may have heard it, maybe you don't know what it is. Everybody have a, kind of a cursory knowledge? If you don't, I'll, I'll give you the basics. WooCommerce is a way to sell stuff online. And it's a very basic point. Whether that's digital downloads, whether that's physical stuff like t-shirts, um, whatever that might be. Um, even if it's something like a subscription service, you can add that in with WooCommerce. But it's a way that people can see your products, they can check out your product, put it into a shopping cart, they can pay for your product, and then whether you ship it to them or give them access to it, they actually have the product at the end. Um, there are other systems out there that do this. Uh, some of them are OK. Uh, and the ones that are really, really good are usually very expensive, like Magento, which is anywhere from five figures up, depending on what you want to sell and how you want to do it. Um, WooCommerce is free. Everybody likes free, right? Free like freedom and free like beer. You can do whatever you want with it, but it's also free to download and use. Um, and the easiest way to do it is to simply go into the WordPress dashboard and download WooCommerce. And when you do that, there's a nice dolphin here that says, hey, you should smile and be happy because you're downloading WooCommerce. Um, and that's how you know that's the right one. Um, and you click the install button, and then it actually will walk you through. And I'm going to walk you through this installer. Because once we've installed WooCommerce, there's a few things you need to check. And that's what I want to walk you through. So it's downloading the plugin, hopefully. Um, but while this is working, um, how many of you guys are dabbling, in, looking into dabbling in this e-commerce, something like that? How many of you already have an e-commerce store up and you're looking to switch? Okay. How many of you are here for a different reason? <laughs> Hopefully you're not here because of me, because I don't want to disappoint on that. <laughs> you have a lot, like more than one e-commerce. How many, anybody more than one? A chain of e-commerce? Oh, perfect. All right. So we've got people from all like all walks here, which is really, really interesting. So I'm going to try and hopefully hit something that everybody can walk away with a little bit of information. Okay? So just like adding a plugin to WordPress, in fact, it is adding a plugin to WordPress, I hit the install button, 
It downloads the plugin and installs it, and then it actually brings you to this nice setup screen that you can walk through in order to sell your product. So uh, I'm going to click Let's Go. And what happens is it's going to create a few pages in your WordPress backend for you. It's going to create a shop page, which is where you go to see your products, a cart page, which is just like it sounds, a shopping cart, a checkout page, which is where people enter their personal information, and then an account page where they can review their orders, change their personal information, um, and stuff like that. You can change the names of these, but this is what it's going to create for you kind of out of the gate. Okay? This will give you sort of the basics of a, of a store, um, which is nice because you don't have to worry about creating these. It'll do it for you as soon as I hit the continue button. So it's, it's going into the database. It's creating all of these pages for me. And when I'm done, it's going to ask me some very basic questions about my store. Uh, where is my store based? Well, right now, my store is based in Georgia. So I can actually tell it this is where I'm based out of. And it's going to use this to determine things like shipping and that sort of thing if I choose to use plugins or just letting people know, hey, this is where the store is located. Um, the currency, it auto determines that based on where I'm located. So it's uh, dollars for obviously US dollars. What unit should I be uh, weighing the products in? Pounds, maybe ounces, depending on what you're selling. Um, and then what unit of measurements? Either inches, yards, millimeters, centimeters, <coughs> whatever unit of measurement you, you want to be able to do. And the reason it uses those units of measurement is because you can actually use that to determine package sizing for your products. I'm going to add it myself, but it, it's, it's important to set up all of these at the beginning so you don't have to go back and hunt and peck for them later on. Shipping and tax setup. Um, are we going to be shipping products? Well, yes, let's say I want to sell t-shirts, you know. I can set a flat rate shipping to start with, and then I can go back in and edit it later. Um, I can either say, yes, I want to ship domestically, or I want to ship internationally. Where do I want to ship in the world? And you actually can set up filters to where someone who's not located in your shipping area won't be able to purchase. That way you don't have to fulfill products that you don't have the ability to fulfill, or you can't ship to countries that you're not allowed to ship to or you can't ship to. Um, so with tax, um, it's kind of the same thing. I'm not, a, I'm not a lawyer, but I do know that you have to charge tax in anywhere that you have a physical location. So if you have a store or if your business is located in Atlanta, you have to charge tax in Atlanta and in Georgia, actually. Um, anywhere outside of that, I don't know if the rules have changed or if they are that anymore. I don't think you have to collect a tax on those anymore. Obviously, the government would like you to, but it's sort of a, um, you know, it's, it's interstate commerce laws and all this stuff that I'm way smarter than I am. So, basically, you just want to say, hey, I'm in Atlanta, I want to set the tax rate. Um, and you can then say, um, you can actually go ahead and import the tax rate. So right now, like, is this right? Is anybody, I'm not from Georgia, so is it is a 4% tax? No. Uh, you're like, I wish, right? <laughs> States for, what about what about Metro Atlanta? Okay, so we can actually say okay. Well, if it's in Georgia, we'll say eight. Um, but like I said, we'll talk about this later. You can go back and change these. So I don't want to import that because it's wrong. Um, as you go through this, though, like I said, you'll see stuff you'll probably laugh at because it, it tries. It really it tries hard. It really does. Um, but um, then you either want to say I want to enter the prices inclusive of tax, so tax is already included or I want to add the prices in and then charge tax on top of that, which is exclusive. Most of the time, you'll exclude the tax and then you'll add the tax on in the end so they can see it. So I'm going to say, we're going to do $5 shipping uh, per order. So just to fill that in. Um, as far as payment gateways go, uh, most people will let you, it'll, right out of the gate, it'll let you take money via PayPal. Um, I have mixed feelings on PayPal. There are other payment gateways you can use, but this one is built in and it's free. So if you want to start taking orders immediately and you have a PayPal address, awesome. Drop your PayPal email address in here, email at paypal.com. Please nobody check out on this website. You can. I don't want to get email. Um, don't do that. So hit continue. And the store is physically set up and ready to go at this point. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to go to the dashboard and I'm going to import some dummy data.
because I want you to see what an actual storefront looks like in WordPress. So I'm going to import it using the WordPress importer, and the, pl the plugin itself actually has this dummy data uh, put in. So I'm going to activate and run the importer, and then I'm going to browse to where my dummy data is, which is under WCATL, uh, plugins, WooCommerce, dummy data. Here we go. Dummydata.xml. And I'm going to import that into WordPress, <coughs> assign it to myself, download the attachments, and it's going to be just like you're importing content from a blog. You know, all of this is set up in WordPress's kind of proprietary, not proprietary, but it's, it's basic format for importing blog posts. So this is going to churn through in a second. Um, and then once this is done, I'll be able to go in and show you this is what a WooCommerce shop looks like with actual products in it instead of looking at an empty, an empty shop, you know, which is depressing. We, you know, we don't like a shop with nothing in it. We want to have products to sell in it. So. I'm just using the 2016 theme for now, just something basic, but I actually created a child theme, um, and I'm going to talk about why I did that in a few minutes. So, While well, this is working, question. Uh, what if I were to use a different checkout page in my uh, Stripe? Is that free too? There are plugins that will allow you, and I'll talk more in depth about this in a second, but there are other plugins you can use. You just have to have an account with that company, obviously. Um, some of them, although I recommend it, everybody has, um, an SSL certificate, which is the encryption, the little green lock, you know, on your website, um, because you're passing personal data back and forth to a server. You want to make sure that's encrypted. Um, but as long as you have both of those things, you can get different plugins that hook into payment gateways. Stripe is, I believe, one of them. Um, Authorize.net is one of them, uh, et cetera. That's Square. What is it? Yeah, Square. Square. Uh, Square, unfortunately, doesn't have a web API yet. All they do is the POS system API. So, question, and we'll keep going. QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online. I believe there is a QuickBooks. It's a lot more complicated than just entering in some credentials, but there is a way to sync up with not only QuickBooks but QuickBooks POS, which is the point of sale system, and all the inventory is synced up as well, which is nice. I think actually the payment gateway and the the QuickBooks are separate, so you can either use just the payment gateway or you can sync up just your inventory. I'll have to look into it for you, but I know that the, it exists because I've done it before. It's, it's been a while. So, so the payment gateway and the QuickBooks. Yeah, it's the Intuit payment gateway, right? Yeah. Yeah, I believe there is a plugin that will do that. So, um, let me go ahead and move on to the storefront stuff, and I'll come back with questions later because I want to make sure we get this. So, so now that I look at my site, um, I can actually go to the slash shop, and here we have a lovely display. Of products. And once again, these are all just dummy products, um, but they're what typical people would sell inside of a shop. Now, before we get too far into it, um, before we get too far into it, I want to go back and double check some of our options because we've set sort of defaults for all of this stuff. But I want to make sure you guys understand not only where these are in WooCommerce, but what they all mean. Okay? So we've got the initial setup out of the way. I want to go back and check the tax rates because A, they're wrong. And we're going to fix them. Um, we're going to check our shipping methods and then we're going to check our payment gateways. And that's what we'll talk more about the payment plugins and the shipping plugins and stuff like that. So if we go back to our dashboard, inside of WooCommerce, inside the dashboard now, we have this lovely sidebar area called WooCommerce. And underneath it, we have products. We'll talk about the products in a second, but right now, I want to go to the settings page because inside of this settings page is going to be everything and anything you need to know about WooCommerce. Okay, so all of these options that I set up ahead of time are already pre-filled in. My location is in Georgia. My currency options, how, how are people going to pay me? You know, what monetary value am I assigning to this? Um, I want to check specifically, once again, the tax rates. Um, because this is probably the number one question that I get. How do I set up these tax rates? The nice thing is that if you have a tax table, like if your Chamber of Commerce provides, like a, or your State Commerce Department or whatever provides a tax table, you can format it inside of Excel and import it. And the way to do that is to say, yes, I want to enable taxes, and then I want to go to my standard tax rates. And then I can import a CSV file from here with the state, the zip code, the city, 
Um, and then there are other things here like the tax name, if it's like a, a name, whatever the name for it, it's like, if it's like Metro Atlanta tax, you would say it's Metro Atlanta tax, or if it's um, county tax for whatever county it is, you can name those, and that way your people, you know, your clients, as they're checking out, will know exactly what taxes are being applied. You know, for priority, um, you can actually set uh, variable taxes, and so if you need somebody in the Atlanta city to be charged one tax rate, but the county to be charged another, then obviously if you put that their zip code is in this zip code list, they're going to be charged both taxes. You can actually say no charge the one with a higher priority. And that way you can see, that way people who have, who live in one spot will get charged twice for taxes. And that way they're not charged 8% and 4%, for example, you know? Um, and then you can also do compound taxes, and that's whether you're having one tax rate and then you're setting it on top of another tax rate. If you know you need that, you would put it here. If you don't know you need it, don't worry about it. Once again, this is the tax rate stuff is all stuff that I've learned from my clients having to fight through this stuff because they're way smarter about it than I am. And this is all stuff that if you know you need it, you know you have, this is where you would put it in. But every every tax rate, every state, every county almost is different. Okay? But when you add a tax rate, you do it by zip code or by the city name, and then you set the tax percentage here. So if it was how much is Metro Atlanta? Eight percent. Seven? Eight. We'll say eight. Um, then I would actually just have to put Georgia and Atlanta. And so anybody that uses Atlanta, Georgia as their address will automatically get charged that 8%. If somebody were to drop in their zip code and they wanted a zip code to have a different tax rate, then it would I could set it to override the Atlanta tax rate based on a certain neighborhood or, or something like that. Okay? Clear as mud so far, right? <laughs> You can't get a spreadsheet, and then there's a format online that you can use to format it in this in this format. Yeah, it does. That's the only thing is it has to be in this order. But once it's put that way, yeah, you just click the import CSV button, and it actually has a sample file that you can download. So you can actually just copy all your tax rates into that file and then upload it. But yeah, it's basically choose the file, whatever your delimiter is. Usually it's a comma. Sometimes it might be a tab. Sometimes it might be something else. Once again, if you, if you know it's something else, you would change it. Otherwise, you just leave it. And then it'll update all of your tax rates. I did this. I actually did a national tax rate table once. And it took about two minutes. But then every county had, all every county they had taxes in were automatically updated. So it was, it was handy, you know? Where do you get those global tax rates? Um, national tax rates? That is, a, that is a question I don't know. I know that you can buy them from some places and they keep them up to date. I think it's four or five dollars for a table for like Georgia. Um, and that's what can be formatted into Excel. But if you buy them on certain websites, if you if you actually do a search for WooCommerce tax table, a lot of people will format them for you and you just buy the tax table and import it. So it's pretty nice. Yes, question. The person that buys a bunch of sites and they're from Atlanta, do you know if they're shipping it or they're mailing it direct? Good question. Goes off the billing rates. Because if somebody's buying it and shipping it to Delaware, <coughs> Delaware has no tax rate. It would still charge them Atlanta taxes. Because it always goes by the billing. Now, if the billing and shipping are the same, it doesn't matter. But it always goes by the billing address. Okay. So we've checked our tax rates. Um, we also have shipping. And there's a couple of different types of shipping uh, that are included. But then I'm going to caveat that by saying we can always add more. Okay. So we've got flat rate shipping, and flat rate is just that. It charges a flat rate to ship out. Uh, free shipping, you actually can set free shipping um, conditions. So if somebody buys over $75, it will activate the free shipping automatically. If somebody uses a coupon that gives you free shipping, you can actually create the coupon, which I'll talk about, um, and then the free shipping will be added automatically. And that way you can charge $5 for shipping, but then at the, uh, at the purchase point, they enter their free shipping coupon, and instead of being charged the $5, it's taken care of. And you can actually get reports on who has free shipping versus um, who's paying for the shipping cost. Um, there's flat rate international for people that ship internationally. 
Um, if you have a local business and you want pickup, you can actually set zip code restrictions and say only people in this radius can pick up, you know? Or same with delivery. You can say I want to deliver out to any of these zip codes only, and then you would put all of those into a list, and anybody in those zip codes will have the option to pick up or have it delivered to you. So it's very handy if you have a local business. Now, if you ship internationally or if you ship across the United States, obviously this is a little bit restrictive, you know, because one shipping, you know, from Atlanta to Chattanooga might be five dollars. From Atlanta to California might be fifteen. Um, if you use UPS or FedEx and have an account with them, there are plugins that you can purchase from WooCommerce that will hook into their shipping tables. Okay. If you use ShipStation, you may like ShipStation, heard of it, used it, um, you can hook into their shipping tables. Um, there are, you can do table rate shipping uh, with a plugin. And a table rate shipping is like zero to $20 is $3 shipping. 21 to $50 is $5 shipping. 51 to 75 is $7 shipping. And so you can set tiered shipping with a plugin. And I say with a plugin because anything that you want to do outside of core WooCommerce, you'll need a plugin to be able to do, or you'll need to write code in order to be able to do it. Because WooCommerce is specifically set up to be very lightweight, and it only lets you include what you need, and that way you're not bogging your website down with unnecessary options. You know, From your perspective as a site owner, that's good because you don't have to slog through all of these options. As a user, they don't have to cut through all of this stuff to buy your product. So we're eliminating as many barriers to entry as we can. Okay. And it goes the same very much with the checkout procedure as well. There are some very basic payment solutions built in. Um, there's PayPal built in, which lets you take PayPal payments either from PayPal or it will let you charge a credit card on PayPal as well. Now, you have to go off to PayPal's website to do it, but you do have that option. You know, I like I said, I have mixed feelings on PayPal because it's PayPal, right? Everybody has stories from PayPal of that one guy or one person that had a horrible experience with PayPal. Um, I don't mind it so much because I get to just get the money out of my PayPal account or whatever. But if you have a merchant account, um, either with one of the local banks, or if you have a merchant account with somebody like authorize.net that you're already using, um, you can integrate with that and be able to use that to take, to take payments. With authorize.net, it's, it's a plugin, once again. You go on to WooCommerce's website, you look for the Authorize.net plugin, you download it, you install it, and then you enter the credentials that Authorize.net gives you, and that lets you use their, their payment system to check out. One caveat is that if you want to use anything other than PayPal, and even if you use PayPal, um, you're going to want to have on your website a, an SSL certificate. An SSL, it stands for Secure Socket Layer. And it's a really fancy way of saying that green lock is protecting your data. You know, I don't know of anybody that wants to check out at a place that doesn't have one of those. Especially, especially in today's society, where like encryption is kind of big in the news lately. You know, um, for you know whatever reason, Apple and the government. But um, <laughs> but that and that's diff that's a little bit different. But at the same time, it's the same concept. Your data is being protected from other people snooping in on it. You know. And by having that green lock, you're telling the people that check out, yes, your data is protected. Um, and by doing that, uh, and it, it, you know, I, this is obviously it's way outside of the scope of this discussion to talk about setting up the SSL certificate, but you, you basically go to whoever your host is, they'll be able to get you an SSL certificate, you pay for it usually, um, and then they'll be able to install it for you and you'll, you'll, you'll be secure. Obviously, if you're a developer, you have your own servers, um, it's a little bit more complicated than that. You have to actually install the certificates and, and things of that nature. But there are tutorials online that you can use to, to look it up. If you Google installing an SSL certificate and whatever your server is, nine times out of 10, you'll be able to find out what tutorial you need to follow. And it's like $10 a year for a very basic SSL certificate. So it's very inexpensive, but the peace of mind it provides is well worth it. You know? I love Let's Encrypt. No, Let's Encrypt is a new initiative. It's a free SSL certificate. Um, if you go to my website, I actually have a tutorial on how to install it. Let's Encrypt? Let's Encrypt. Okay. Like, let us encrypt. Let's Encrypt. It's free. Um, it renews itself every three months. 
if you're on a if you're on a dedicated or a virtual private server, like if you're a developer, uh, there's scripts that you can run that will do it for you automatically. Otherwise, you just have to remember to renew your your thing every three or four months. But it's free, um, and it's really really nice because it, everybody deserves to have an encrypted website. So, good question. So, um, and I'll get my website later for anybody that wants to look up the tutorial. Question, and then we'll move on. Okay, just a quick question about this. You talked about shipping and then the taxes. Yeah. You said that you can do certain things. Like if when like you want to charge free shipping for something over fifty dollars, yeah. Whatever. Um, is is it like the hyperlinks that you were showing? Or, or so if you go to the shipping tab uh -huh. and click free shipping, uh -huh. um, I can enable the free shipping, and then it's okay. free shipping requires either a coupon, a minimum order amount, either that or a coupon, minimum amount, and a coupon. But you set all of these conditionals up okay. inside so the app. Yeah. So, as far as adding a product into WooCommerce, if you've added a blog post, this is going to be very, very familiar to you. So I'm actually going to edit a product that's already there because I want to talk about the differences between the various products. So, this looks like a good product to edit. Once again, this should look very familiar to you if you've used any, any WordPress at all. Um, adding a product is very similar to adding a blog post. You have the title of the product up at the top, some basic text here that talks about the product. You have product categories, product tags, a product image, which is just like a featured thumbnail. Um, you can add an, a, a thumbnail gallery underneath it, so you can have one big image and then like thumbnails to click on if you have more than one picture. Um, and then a short description, which is kind of like an excerpt, right? So you've got all of these familiar elements, but then here in the middle, is this big thing called product data. And that's where you would enter in all of the stuff about the product. Uh, if you're using a stock keeping unit, a SKU, you would drop that in here. You could set a regular price. You could put it on sale and set a sell price. Um, if you want to track inventory, you can say, OK, well, I have 500 units of this product. After that, it goes away. Or I need to order more, depending on how you do it. Um, you can allow people to back order and notify them once it's ready. You can allow back orders, not allow back orders. You can say it's in stock versus out of stock. You can set it to where they only can sell one at a time. So if you have a very special product or something that you don't want multiple sold of, um, you can limit purchases to one per customer, or at least one per order. You know. And same with the shipping. You can set the weight and the dimensions. Remember how I talked about FedEx and UPS? They actually use this information to table rate how much your shipping will be based on who you use. So UPS says, well, it's a five pound box. In this length and width and height of a box, this is how much your shipping is going to be. And so you can control the, all of that at the product level. Now, but there is a difference between some types of products in WooCommerce. There's something called a simple product. And a simple product is, I'm selling a poster. There's not a lot of difference between poster to poster. It's one poster, you're selling multiple copies of it, that's how it rolls. Now, if I wanted something that was more like a t-shirt. Nope, oh, that's not a variable product. So there's two, there's two kinds of products. There's a simple product, and then there's a variable product. And a variable product, actually I saw one down here. Here we go. A variable product means it's a product that has multiple different types of products. So a simple product is I have one poster that I'm selling. Um, a variable product says, well, maybe I have a t-shirt and I have it in two different colors. I have a black t-shirt and I have a blue t-shirt. Or maybe I have multiple sizes of t-shirts. I have a small, a medium, a large, and an extra large. Okay? I can go in under the attributes tab on WooCommerce and tell it what different colors and what different sizes I have. And then as the user checks out, if they will be able to check out which size they want and which color they want. I can even go down um, under this variations tab, and I can actually set all of the product information based on each variation. And you can have unlimited variations. So if I had two colors, black and blue, three sizes, small, medium, and large, and two styles, short sleeve and long sleeve. If I wanted somebody to have a blue, large, long sleeve t-shirt and pay five extra dollars for that, I can do that. Okay? I can have it set up to where every possible combination, two times three times six, if there's 12 possible combinations that I can have of, of shirts with style, color, and size. And all 12 of those 
I can set exactly how I want it to, what price, what SKU, um, inventory, and all that good stuff. Question? What about just for instance a t-shirt company that wanted to do this specifically and you had a choice between multiple logos or wanted them to upload their own logo? Uh, multiple logo choices, definitely doable. You just put in which logo you want and then you would set each, like see the, the black one has its individual picture and the blue one has its individual picture. Adding your own logo, that's where it starts to get a lot more complicated because then you're, you're doing picture rendering, you're displaying a picture over the blank t-shirt. I don't know of anything that will do like an upload your own kind of thing, but if you want to set like three or four logo designs ahead of time, absolutely can be done. You just set them as variations and say logo style one, logo style two, logo style three, small, medium, large, color, what have you, you know? But where you get into adding the customizing stuff, that's where it starts to get a lot more complicated because you're, you're taking user data, you're processing that on the back end, and then you're outputting that back to the, uh, you know, back to the customer. So it's a little more complex than just selecting a few logos. So one more question, we'll go forward. Uh, do you have to assign all of the individual colors, or would you have multiple colors and multiple bodies? Will it populate the SKUs separately? It, if they're all under the same SKU, um, it'll populate under the parent product SKU. So if, you're, if all of your blue t-shirts, if all of your t-shirts are under the same SKU, yeah, you would be able to use that SKU. But if all of your blue long sleeve t-shirts were a different SKU number, you would have to go in and edit those variations individually. Okay? You can, you can have a different SKU work. You can, yeah. So right here, like the blue t-shirt is, that would be t-shirt blue. But if I had a long sleeve blue medium t-shirt, it would be t-shirt long sleeve blue medium or whatever I wanted. Then obviously that's way too long. But um, that I can have it be whatever I wanted it to be. Okay? So we've got products. Um, we've got the, the installing WooCommerce. Um, I did want to talk about one thing that's on here, and that's the coupons thing, because so, you can have discounts given to people um, by adding coupons very, very easily. So under WooCommerce, there's coupons. I'm going to add a coupon. Uh, it's over here on the left, and I just add new. I can enter whatever I want the coupon code to say. So guess what? If you're coming to WordCamp Atlanta, I'm going to give you a cart percentage discount of 100%. Uh, guess what? I have nothing to sell, and I've got plenty of it. So, um, my, do I have a product for you? Um, but yeah, so this is where I would go and say I want to give people free shipping. I can control when the coupon expires. Hey, I want you to be able to have this deal until 5 o'clock. Actually, it's not quite that precise, but I can definitely say the end of the day today, it will expire. You know? I can restrict it. I say, well, I have to have you spend fifty dollars before I can give you this coupon. Or I can say you can't use this coupon with any other coupons. You can't use it on things that are on sale. You can only use it on um, this product or this particular variation of product. You can only buy the blue, the black T-shirt. You can only get a discount off of that. You know. I can also say, well, I only want niche at nichecancer.me to be able to use that coupon. And so I can email a blogger and say, here's your special coupon, don't try to share it. Nobody else is gonna get this deal, you're gonna get this deal. And so I can restrict, uh, not only by person, but also usage limits. So I can say, well, I want this user to only have one use of this coupon. That way they can't go back and do five orders and get the discount five times, because that'll happen. Let's be honest, right? <laughs> if, people, if people can abuse the system, they will be abused. So we can set those ahead of time. Um, or I want to use this coupon, the first 500 people to use this coupon to use it. And so I can have either usage by coupon or usage by user or both. You know? And like I said, that's where I can grant people the ability to have free shipping and that sort of thing based on these coupons. Now, extending this further with plugins, you can do store credit and give people $5 of store credit and it will be in their account and it will deduct from that first before it charges their credit card. Um, you can do gift cards, and so you can actually have these be, uh, they have cash value at that point. Not actual cash value, but in-store credit cash value. Um, and once again, these are all plugins that can be inserted into WooCommerce, and you can extend WooCommerce beyond what it can do originally. You know? Two questions, and then we'll move forward. What's that? Okay. If I wanted to become <coughs> a PDF of information. Great question. <laughs> and bad work. Well, no, you don't have to password protect it. Thank you for bringing that up. Let me, I'm gonna interject. There is a third type of product called a digital download. And the way that that works is you can set it to be 
a virtual downloadable product. You can upload the file. Um, and you can say what kind of product it is. Um, but then you can also say they can only download it five times. Or after that, it expires. But what happens is when they log into their account, they will have a link to download this product. And it will drop a cookie in. And if they, if they try to download it too many times, if you set a limit, it will kick them out. And they won't let them be able to download it. Or you can just say, here, you have full access to it, whatever you want. But they have their, in their account, it will show a place where they can come and download this file. And in the email receipt, they'll get a link to download the file. But you upload the file through the product, and it, they don't get access to it until they purchase it. So, yeah, thank you for uh, thank you for reminding me. I forgot all about that. Next question, then we'll go for yeah, it. Is it possible to set up by discount? So if somebody, if you're selling t-shirts, somebody orders five t-shirts to get a 10 Yes, there's plugins that will let you do either buy one, get ones, okay. uh, buy X, get Y, <laughs> buy X, get 50% off. Um, there are, there are, there, there's different types of plugins that will do these different like discount rates, you know, and it's it's like a, a trigger, you know, they, they add this into their cart three times and then they get that much discount, you know, um, but yeah, there are definitely plugins that will extend WooCommerce out to be able to, to do that. Nine, okay, so this is the one caveat I have with WooCommerce, because I love WooCommerce, but most of the plugins you have to pay for. Now, is it worth it? Yes. Because they're supported by WooCommerce if they come from the official store. You know? Most of the plugins I'm talking about have an official plugin that you can buy. Authorize.net, FedEx, UPS shipping, table rate shipping, all that good stuff. If you find a free plugin that will do it, you don't get the support to be able to help set it up. So if you need that support, go for the official plugin from their repository or from their purchase. If you think you can do it on your own, take a chance with a free shipping plugin or a free plugin. Try it out. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, there's always an alternative to fall back. Okay? Uh, what time is it? 4 30. Yeah, we got about. <coughs> yes? Can you just review quickly again a bulk upload of product and images? So the way, there's no way, okay. So when I imported the products into here, I imported them from a WordPress file. If you don't have a WordPress file, there is a plugin called WP All Import. And the way it works is that you set up a, a, a spreadsheet. And then you map all of your spreadsheet files to WooCommerce files, or to WooCommerce fields. And run the import, and it'll bring in everything for you. How do you, I, I do use WP All Import. Yep. How do you do it with images? I understand. With images, the way that you have to do it is you have to upload the images somewhere first and then it copies them over from the internet somewhere. So you have to actually use uh, use URLs to your images. Now once it's brought in, it'll be it actual... load them into the media... It will bring them into the media uploader, yes. Okay. But you have to have it online somewhere else first. Okay. Um, so and can I just FEPM into my... Say what? Can I just FEPM and sit them in my... Absolutely, you okay. can. Yeah, that's the easiest way to do it. But it has to go fetch the image and then do something with it. You can't like upload batch images. I wish you could, that'd be really easy. Um, but that is kind of the one caveat. Because if you're doing 3,000 products, it's gonna ra it would rather go and get 3,000 URLs from the internet than try to upload 3,000 from your computer. You know? So, awesome. So I want to show you, before we get too far into it, I want to show you a case study. Um, and this is my largest client that uses WooCommerce. Has anybody ever heard of the fashion world? They're super cool. They do great. They're great people. Um, and they do great work. So they originally, they'd originally started, they went to Africa and they found women that needed jobs in Africa. And they're making these products and they're really high end, really nice products. Leather bags, leather totes, scarves, uh, all that kind of stuff. They've expanded that now and so they're working with people who are doing sustainable fashion, whether, no matter where they are on the planet. Um, but this is what a WooCommerce website looks like. They get about 60,000 unique kits a month. Um, I can't give all actual details, but I can tell you sales are like five figures per month, which is pretty nice. Sometimes per week, if it's a good week. Um, but they've got, um, and this is obviously a very customized site, but the actual core of it is WooCommerce. And so I can go in and click on uh, the My You May Leather Tote, which is their top seller. Um, and I can pick which color I want the tote to be on, in green or in black. Um, I can add personalization options, so I want to customize it 
and add like letters that are um, burned into the uh, into the letters. You know, uh, with their scarves, especially their scarves are really really nice. They've got um, different varieties of scarves depending on what team you support or uh, different styles of, of the scarf in different colors. So I want a red scarf or a white scarf or a pink scarf. My favorite part, and the part that I'm the most proud of is about, um, it's kind of similar to what they were talking about with the logo upload, but it's a little bit different. It's a customizable jewelry seller. So I can actually go in and design my own necklace in very, very, very different styles. So let's say I want the Circle pin. Um, and I can select what chain I want. I can select a, a gold silver, circle to go with a gold chain. Um, and then a jade square. And then at the end of the process, it shows me the finished product. And then I can go back and say, yeah, you know what, I want a rose gold instead. Or a silver chain. Or because I can't, like, Stone. I wanted the turquoise square instead. But all of this is done with, with a, a what's called a component plugin, and it lets me set all of these different uh, these different items as component products. They're not they're not visu visual visible in the store, but when they check out with this, it'll deduct those product inventories from basically a product bin kind of stuff. So one circle, one rose gold circle, one uh, rose gold chain. Uh, but I can go in and customize this, and it still tracks all the inventory levels for each individual piece of the project. That's a plug into WooCommerce? This is a very customizable plug. It's very customized, very heavily customized. Um, but there, what it does is, have you, anybody ever built a computer on like Dell.com? Mm -hmm. the, the, that particular style where you choose your components is the basis for what this does. The only thing that I customized on it was I made it to where you could see a final finished product. And what happens is for the, for the developers in the room, I actually use JavaScript. When I when this add the, add the bag button, which is the add to cart button, when that JavaScript trigger fires, it loops through all of my input choices here and, and attaches all of those to an array. And then the array is attached to a file name that goes out and it pulls that file name. So that's how I'm able to say, okay, well here's my circle, it's rose gold. And now it pulls like gold, silver chain, rose gold circle, turquoise circle. And that's one long so file. Let me clarify, this is yes. a custom developed plugin for WooCommerce. Yes. Okay. But this is to show the, the possibilities. Right. You know? okay. WooCommerce is it's just like WordPress. You can extend it to the point where you can do pretty amazing things with it. And you don't have to just sit there and be okay with, well, I want it to do this, but I don't know if I can do it. With the right amount of time or a developer at your side, uh, if you're not developer minded, you can definitely have anything that you want in a storefront. And people were asking me earlier about, well, okay, how does it compare to like Magento? You know, Magento is like a $10,000 piece of software. And I haven't seen anything that e-commerce can't do that, that Magento can. You know, it's just a matter of being able to set it up and get it exactly how you want it. Yes? Sorry, I'm going to clarify one more time because I don't think I heard it. Is this a customized WordPress plugin that works with WooCommerce? Or yes. WooCommerce well, it's both. It is a WordPress plugin, but it specifically works with WooCommerce. Okay. So but you still use it. WooCommerce um, extension. Well, you know that is yeah. It, it's the uh, it's called uh, components. I think is what it's called. But it's a WooCommerce. It is yeah. But it, all of their extensions are plugins, and you just install them alongside. No, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, we're actually we can do Q and A right now. Actually, that's all I really had to talk about. So any questions? Yeah, we'll start here and kind of work our way this way. There's not a plugin that does it. It's actually had a client that wanted to do that. Um, so the way we ended up doing it is we use an affiliate dashboard, and so each salesperson has their own links. And what I what it does is it tracks either coupon codes, which is how they. I mean, and, and it sounds really bad to say coupon code, but it's it's more like a tracking idea at that point. And then I can give them whatever discounts that they're set up to get, but then the sales rep can be tracked based on their affiliate coupon to see who's selling what. It's WP Affiliate, I think it's the name of it, WP Affiliates. But it works as an affiliate dashboard, but I've used it in the past 
for sales reps so that they can track met their track their sales. Because they you give them their own kind of code to enter, not a coupon code, but like an affiliate code. And they enter that in, you give them whatever discounts they're uh, able to give out, you know, um, and then they can track what affiliate sales that they've done through the dashboard. And then you can actually trigger payouts that way as well. So yes. More personal business question. As a web developer, if you have a client that are you using commerce before, do you are you the one that enters all the data in at first and then teach them or Yeah, I mean well I don't enter it all in. I sit down I personally I sit down with them and do something similar to what I'm doing with you guys. I walk everybody through it, you know, they take hopefully copious notes. Um, and I'm around to answer questions. Or if they want, I can hire some. I personally would hire somebody to do it for them, like a data entry kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, ultimately, personally, um, I want to I want to give as much power as I can to them. Because yeah. if they feel like I'm doing all the work for them, then I don't think they own it. You okay. know, and so it sits there and stack hands. Okay. So I've had to do all the work basically for a client. Yeah. Listen, this, is where, this is where a junior developer comes in very handy. Uh, <laughs> You know, because I don't mind paying somebody a little bit of work to do something that I don't want to do. Yeah. Because that's that, that frees up my time to make more money doing other stuff. So the win win. You know, they get paid, I get paid to work. So that way, and then we'll move this way. So yes. And how are you handling updates with this? Are you, um, are you when you're, because you're adding modifying the add to cart? Are you actually doing manual updates then to WooCommerce to make sure all your code stays in place? Thank you for answering that. So any code modifications that you want to do to WooCommerce are done with actions, books, and filters. So anything that you add, you can add it to either a site plugin or you can add it to your theme function spot. Any updates you make, okay, that, that's actually half of the answer, so I'll give you the other half in a second. Any updates you would make would then carry over to your updated WooCommerce. The other way that you do it, and I'll actually, if I've still got it pulled up, I'll show you, is that WooCommerce has its own templating system. And you can override templates from inside of WooCommerce. So I'll go to the plugin folder and show you that I have templates here. And so any page that I would need to have in WooCommerce has a template attached to it. I could copy this over to my theme folder, make changes to it, and then WooCommerce would let me know that there's, a, there's an, uh, a custom page out there for it, and then I can always go back and merge code in if the updates happen later. So either an action, a hook, or a filter for adding changes or changing like functionality, or if I'm changing layout and structure, I would put in a customizable page net and go from there. But it works, it's, it's the WordPress way. We're not editing core, we're editing a, an offshoot of that to be able to update it later. You know? Question? Uh, what do you do as far as on the back end when you're selling product and you need to do a return or you have people shipping? How do you follow that process or the status? The uh, So if you go to an order inside, I don't have an order on created yet. Actually, I might. Let me see. Uh, orders, here we go. Let's see if there's a custom order. No, okay, I didn't bring it in. When there's orders here, you can click on the order and it'll show you everything that's going on. And actually, it's a, it's a, it's a post type. So you can query that and send it out to other places. You can use an API and pull that information if you want to do it that way, if, if you're developer-minded like that. Um, but ultimately, you can go in and click on an order and see what's going on. Payment didn't complete. Okay, why didn't it complete? Okay, let's try to run it again. We can do it. We can get their credit card information and try to run it manually. You know that sort of stuff. Um, if you want to do a return, that's up to the payment gateway. PayPal Basic won't let you process returns unless you enter in some extra information. The other authorized.net and stuff that's moved directly to your bank account. They will let you process returns. So you can process them right inside of WooCommerce, and it'll show. It'll say refunded. Client will give money back. Order was closed out, etc. So. Here and then we'll go back there and then in front. How do you feel about Woo for uh, paid subscription membership sites? The subscriptions module is fantastic. Um, I'm doing a site that has a listify, a listify theme for a client, and they use the subscription engine to basically process payments for each one, and then they, it assigns a user role, and they can do stuff with that user role. It's worth saying it's fantastic. Probably the best. I'd say it's the best solution out there. Because you can you can do other stuff with that subscription by using the, the templates the tags that are built in, and you can actually you can code in restrictions to content based on what subscription they want. Have you seen it used with 
part of what I need on the other side of the membership wall mm -hmm. are user forums, um, you know, community forums, yeah. press type stuff. Yeah. And my reading is telling me it's kind of challenging to do with Blue. Is that your experience? Or not? As, as what you need, basically, there's a template tag that checks the user's level and see what kind of subscription they're buying. And so this is pseudocode. It's theoretical, but it should work. You would basically put your forum page behind this template call, like a conditional, and say, if they have this subscription, give them access. If not, give them an error message and offer them to subscribe. You know? So it's, it's, it's feasible, but you have, to, you have to edit templates in order to be able to do it. Call my fellow friends. So, um, right here in the front, yes. I had two things. Somebody asked about tax rates in Georgia. Those are available in the Georgia Department of Revenue website. Okay. And they change frequently, but all the rules and regulations are also you don't need one, but it's still nice to have. Yeah, not a requirement. So, a couple more questions and then we'll go party. <laughs> Are there certain themes that you know that this doesn't work well with? The nice thing is, well, the nice thing is any theme can be made to work with it. The way it works, and I was going to do it with 2016, but it actually works right out of the box really well. Um, if you have a theme that's like a custom theme, and you want to include WooCommerce, you can take a copy of your like full page, like you know how you have page templates, right? And so you have like a full page template that takes away the sidebar and stuff like that. You can take a copy of that, and WooCommerce will give you a little chunk of code to put in, and it'll use that page template instead. So you can actually wrap your um, WooCommerce code however you need it to be wrapped. You know, whether it's a full page wrapper, whether it's like with a sidebar on the right side, however you want to do it. Um, I that covers about 95% of, of themes. Obviously, if the theme is not coded well, you're going to have other problems besides WooCommerce. But yeah, I'd say that if you've got a pretty standard newer theme, last couple of years. Um, It'll either work out of the box, or you can copy your your full page template. And there's there's a, if you Google WooCommerce theme integration, that's the theme that'll get you to the page that tells you how to do it. And it's just copying a little bit of code and copying one of your files in your template. So, last question, right here, and then up there. Yeah. Um, is there a way to uh, or a plugin to modify the shop display page? Because I have a client who doesn't want the pictures and. I just created a child theme through some code in there to move the picture. Yeah. But um, you can edit the WooCommerce templates and take out the pictures. Like you can make a copy of the WooCommerce template, put it into your theme file, and just remove the call for the picture. Or you can unset using a filter and an action. You can unset the the image display function and take care of it that way. And if you're um, not a developer, you can use tool set types and views to do it that way. Yes. Without having to get into template files. Yeah, it's cleaner to do it with the template files, but and obviously, I mean, as a as, as not a developer, I can tell you you can use CSS to hide it. Don't do that. Yeah. You could do it, but don't do it. Yeah. Um, I, there was a solution on, yeah. on a Woo forum, and I was like, well, okay. Uh, <laughs> just, no, don't do that. Um, okay. Don't do it unless you absolutely have to. You know, yeah. CSS doing the things is last week. But if you can unset it with a function, you definitely do it that way. Yeah. Or a template file. So, question here. Yeah. Shipping? No, with shipping labels, that's something that would be done with something like ShipStation. You can integrate with that, but there may be a plugin that lets you do invoices. Yeah, there's a plugin. There is? Um, invoice and packing list plugin. Yeah, I've used the packing list plugin before actually, and it's worked really well because I can just download a copy of where I need to pack up and it's ready to go. Yeah, thank you for reminding me of that. I appreciate that. Any other questions? Last question. I think. Um, Good to go. The, uh, I was looking at the membership where it looks like you can set up a paywall. Can that work for a multi site? Yes. Um, however, it's been a while since I've worked with multi sites. Each multi-site is considered a separate WordPress install. So I think you want to be able to like access certain parts of the multi-site if they're on if they're paid like if they're paid members, they get access, they get 
certain access to uh, certain multi-site. Certain, certain multi you would, in the multi-site themes, you would have to do a call back to the original site okay. and do a conditional call. Okay. Because the actual products would carry over from site to site, but then you could do the, you could do the switch sites okay. function and then check your, your conditional and then check back and then you could do it that way. So, that makes sense? Yes. Thank you guys for coming out. I'd like to I know this is the last session, so thanks for hanging here.